Well, welcome everyone to this presentation, How to Attract the Future Auditing Workforce. I'm Mike Richmond, your host for Exemplar Global's Excellence in Auditing Expo 2024. This session is presented by Greg D'Souza, and Craig is an Exemplar Global Certified Lead Auditor for ISO 9001, ISO 14001, and ISO 45001, and he's the Innovation Advisor for eRisk 360. In this presentation, Craig is going to look at some strategies he's developed to attract new people into the auditing profession. So Craig, thanks for joining us here at the Expo. Thanks, Mike. It's a pl uh, real pleasure to be here. So I'm going to be talking, um, as you mentioned in the introduction, about the Australian experience attracting auditors into the workforce. In terms of the outline of the presentation, I'll talk a little bit about the company. Um, then I'll talk about some of the challenges which have been with the audit auditing industry for a while. I'll talk about our approach to tackling some of these challenges and why we think it's important to tackle these challenges. I'll also go through some lessons we learned during the process and some areas of future focus. And hopefully what you will be able to do is um, you know, take home some key messages and maybe implement this in your organization or in your jurisdiction. So in terms of a brief, brief introduction, I won't go into too much detail on this, but we're a team of auditors. Um, we're trying to move away from the word audit and use assessors and consultants. Um, being quite lucky to work across a range of schemes. And this particular presentation is around our experience with ecotourism, um, where we've been able to work with the ecotourism industry to, um, to tackle some of the challenges which I'll go into. Um, effectively, we're a, we're a, um, we're, a, we're an auditing and consulting business, and we deal with um, clients from a, across a range of industries, from small businesses through to large corporations and government clients. Um, and organisations typically hire us because of our expertise, not just with the compliance standards around ISO, but also meeting some of their quality assurance. Um, requirements around the safety, reliability, and sustainability of products and services, um, and also around compliance and the ability to alleviate some of the challenges experienced with, um, with potential non-compliance. So again, I've worked in the industry for over 15 years and done, uh, done numerous audits across various standards. And as I've identified here in this slide, it's it's an aging workforce. It's very male dominated. Um, and the perception of auditors really isn't isn't very strong. Um, it's not considered a glamorous industry. Um, there is a lot of travel um, and some consider that can be quite draining. It can be a bur quite a burden. Um, it, can be it can be quite difficult on families as well. So, um, it can be stressful. It's certainly a stressful role. Um, and I've certainly had some experiences in, in that um, situation where, um, you know, typically um, the audit process can be a stressful role. So um, it's it's not considered um, by a lot of people as, as, I guess, you know, what you'd call a glamorous industry. Also, in terms of the the mundane and administrative nature of, of some of the work um, can be considered to be a bit menial. Um, I guess when you compare it to other career paths, potentially like finance or consulting. Um, and also some obvious sort of challenges as the industry moves now more into, into, um, into technology and you know AI, where there's sort of increasing competition in these industries um, to get this better work-life balance and basically chase more exciting opportunities. So it's a difficult industry to attract new graduates, um, whether it be engineers, scientists, um, environmental scientists. Um, it's, it, it's certainly a challenging um, industry to attract new staff. And, and um, certainly it's, it's, an, it's, it's a challenge which... We as a company, ERIS 360, would like to participate in, in, in actually um, looking at how we can we can tackle some of these challenges, and and that's what we feel like we've we, we've done, um, and this is the purpose of this presentation. So, what what we um, saw as as a challenge, we also looked at it as an opportunity. 
Um, and it came about typically by working with um, ecotourism and the tourism industry. Um, again, it's a regulated industry and there is a need for auditors. And we saw this opportunity. So we worked um, with a number of reputable university institutions and training organizations. And we started liaising directly with these institutions. Um, admittedly, we'd had some existing relationships with universities. So it was really um, beneficial that they, when I say they, it's the universities knew who we were. Um, we had some runs on the board with these universities. Um, and we were able to continue to engage um, and develop these relationships and build the rapport that really was needed in order to look at how we can partner with these universities to try and solve some of these challenges. Um, and we we thought the pathway to, to do that, um, that fit um, the model was, was ecotourism because it was an exciting opportunity, one that would really attract um, a new breed of talent which we believed um, would be highly attracted to working in, in an industry such as ecotourism. So you might ask, why did we tackle this, this problem? Um, I guess um, there's, a, there's a number of reasons, but we saw, we saw some, some gaps in terms of how universities dealt with industry or the linkages universities, and for that matter, training organizations um, research institutions how they linked up with industry there was a, there was a serious pitfall in terms of in terms of those linkages and we saw eris 360 as an as a way to to bridge that gap um and um not just that but an ability to get engaged with universities also enabled us as a business to look at how we can grow and scale the auditing model and as I mentioned previously, it's an opportunity to attract new talent and test the waters prior to um, providing someone with either a part-time or a full-time role. So there was an ability to support the learning process, support the universities, um, build different training models um, on how we can work better with universities. And, and we saw this as a mechanism to tackle the problem of, um, of an aging auditing workforce. So the purpose again of this presentation is to try and impart some skills into the community um, and into your jurisdiction and your organization um, in terms of how we, um, we, we were able to, to sell the model to the university. And that's really what it involved. It did involve um, a sales ethos within the business where we had to um, engage with the university um, listen to their needs and the requirements um, and effectively build those relationships from the ground up. Um, and we did that with a number of universities. Some are very active and um, in, in very active and, and, and some were quite quite challenging in terms of how um, how slow the process was and it, it, it took a long time from anywhere between six to 12 months to to convince these universities that what we, can offer um, a student um, or a graduate is a really exciting opportunity to work as an auditor within the ecotourism industry. Um, so these are some of the skills here on this slide, which um, I, I, I won't dwell on, but it's effectively the ability to, um, to communicate very clearly the requirements of, a, of an auditor and, um, and also really identify what's in it for the university and ultimately the student. Um, and we had a very clear understanding of why this would be attractive to the student um, and why it was actually a win-win outcome. So there was an ability for the university to get that training. It was a pathway to employment. And the student also had the opportunity to learn um, and also develop um, some skills that supported their actual um, development of um the development of their of their learning towards the course and and also have that balance between being able to do some remote work and on-site work so we wanted to be a fun uh, role where um, it is really about trying to develop that student so that um, effectively we could help um, help them get their credentials towards their degree as quickly as possible but also um, develop skills so they can get paid while they 
um, continue to to do their course. And and in this instance, it was it was um, working with environmental science, environmental policy students. So the benefits, as I as I alluded to previously, it's about finding out um, was it's about finding out what um, what's really in it for the university and the students, and developing win win outcomes. Um, and the benefit uh, for ERIS three hundred and sixty again, as I mentioned, um, you know, it is an ability for us to get some assistance to um, also do some of the desktop research um, and develop an ability for us to look at how we could scale the auditing model. Um, and some obvious um, fresh eyes into the into the business really helps someone who is young and has the ability to look at the organization from a fresh uh, from a fresh perspective. Um, and again, so the, as I've pointed out, the win-win outcomes for both the student, the university, and ERIS 360 as a business. Um, and the pathways to future employment um, for a student and the ability to work hybrid um, hours where they can achieve a work-life balance. So there was um there was a there was a I guess what I'm really trying to convey here is that the the win-win outcomes were for not just ERIS 360 as a business, but for the actual um, student as well. And we've um, been able to demonstrate this um, by running a number of um, internships um, and one in particular at the moment, which is currently active and um, getting some really uh, strong um, benefits through that. Some of the things we learned during this process, as I mentioned, it's a long process. It can be anywhere between six to 12 months before we actually started to get a regular pipeline of interns and placements. Um, it can be a, a fairly extensive process. Um, you know, we've um, approached a number of different universe, universities, and now we feel that the model is working well in in a handful, which which is great. Um, and here are some key sort of sales techniques, I guess, in terms of um, in terms of selling the opportunity to the university. And it's really about um, it, it is really about business development, and it's about fundamental sales skills, which is about having having multiple touch points within the university. So it's not just, um, you know, people within the placement team, but you might want to talk to the industry coordinators, the um, researchers, the academics who actually run the courses around environmental tourism, uh, journalism, and, and engage with these people to get an understanding of the course and the requirements um, and really how these internships that we're creating um, will benefit, um, will benefit the, the student. And um, uh, so following our experience currently with these rolling internships, um, we um, we have regular check-ins and meetings with the intern, both virtually and face-to-face. -face. Um, they're structured mentoring and training. Um, we offer this online. Um, we've got a really, we've developed our onboarding process now and our training process to um, be a combination of both desktop research um, and also um, on-site work as well. And the key thing has been the regular feedback sessions that we run, um, providing a two-way discussion between the supervisor within ERIS 360 and the student, as well as continual engagement with the university as well to, to provide these check-ins on how things are going. Because at the end of the day, we wanna get, um, we wanna achieve the outcome. We wanna achieve the win-win outcome for both. So some areas for future improvement. Um, we want to continue to um, uh, develop our, our, our blueprint with universities, um, for that matter, even ex expand it out to TAFEs um, and look at how we can have um, a, a regular pipeline of interns working within the business. And at the moment, ecotourism is one area and we would like to see it rolled across, rolled across other areas as well. Um, ecotourism has the flexibility to be able to incorporate um, these experiences and these really interesting experiences because a lot of the the the, the on-site work is 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 quite attractive to students and interns who who like to get out there in the environment um, and actually experience um, various uh, tourism operators um, and and how they how they conduct their business. So it's actually um, 
uh, it's, it's actually quite an exciting opportunity uh, in ecotourism, but we, we, we'd like to see it expand into other areas of, of auditing as well. Um, so that's, um, yeah, and in, in terms of targeting specific disciplines um, where skill set or capacity bottlenecks exist. Um, so what I mean there is at the moment we're focused purely on on environmental science, um, environmental policy, environmental studies. But if we can start looking at these multidisciplinary areas where these internships can have a little bit more longevity potentially where um, a student could potentially um, help with uh, writing articles or helping with marketing. Um, so effectively, we, we're really looking at how to how to extend um, how to extend the the um, the capability and the skills of that particular role. So the auditor has multiple um, facets to their skill to their skill dynamic. Um, they can be an auditor as well as help in marketing and 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 do other things that they might um, enjoy. Um, and also um, the ability to, um, as I mentioned, it's a two-way feedback process. Um, we we believe that an area of growth would be to foster that learning and growth, um, where we where we basically have a more formalized mentor mentee relationship, um, and we can empower uh, more of a two-way learning process. Maybe to leverage various learn mentoring platforms or look at how. Um, Eras 360 as a business can really develop their their um, their 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 ability to train and retain um, interns. So thank you for joining us. There's probably a lot of things that I didn't cover, um, but um, like areas uh, future technology and how we can incorporate this into the learning experience. But um, hopefully you've gained some um some knowledge and um some experience in terms of uh how we as a business here were able to engage um proactively with universities and um if you have any questions please feel free to to reach out over to you mike good job craig yes thank you and i i want to encourage people to do that reach out there at info at exemplarglobal.org you see it right there on your screen and if you have questions uh, for Craig, we'll get them right over to Craig. If you have questions for any of us on the team or any of our other presenters, just write us there. We'll get them to the right place and get you an answer. Um, and, and Craig, as I say that, I, I as I listen to your presentation, I, I actually had a few things that came to mind. Um, I, can you tell me a little bit more about the the um, the kind of people that you're meeting? The kind of I assume most of these are young people. They're at your university, um, although I guess they don't have to be, but. Tell me about the uh, about their background. You know wh wh why you know why maybe they were interested in pursuing this. You know what are they studying? What do they graduate with? A little, a little bit more about who those people are would be would be interesting. I think. Yeah. So we we went in with a with a really niche focus. Um, we didn't really want to go too broad and you know put it out put this opportunity out to. Um, a number of disciplines, even though we thought that it could potentially attract students from a number of different disciplines, but the kinds of interest that we wanted for was uh, effectively people with an environmental studies, environmental background, um, people that have an understanding of and knowledge of, um, you know, flora and fauna and climate change and those typical sort of issues. And we're interested in getting um, exposure, um, practical experience, um, within the environmental um, area to complement their studies. So we were really talking to, to environmental, um, environmental science and environmental engineering students. Um, and those, those um, students that had a particular interest um, in, in, in ecotourism. And I, I like that you were talking about that, uh, that kind of that two way learning, the bi directional learning, because I think that that's something that we, you know, we just don't talk about enough. I mean, whether it's an internship or program, as you mentioned, where you're reaching out to, to people in school or, or even just, you know, mentorship, maybe within uh, an organization where you have two professionals that are ones mentoring the other. There's always this idea that. And generally speaking, the more elderly, the more elder of the two, 
the, the more experienced will kind of do all the educating. And that the the other person is just kind of the receiver of all this information, but I don't think that's really true in the real world, is it? Well, yeah, I mean, you're hundred percent right. Um, the it, it also goes back to your first question. The people that come through and I'm talking to have experience. Yes, they may be studying environmental science. They may be in their their final year um, or their you know second last year. They may be you're still quite young in 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 uh, in where they are in their in their career, but they they do have a vast um, experience um, and breadth of knowledge where they've traveled or they may be learning a musical instrument or another language and and they're bringing in um, a whole new sort of dynamic into into thinking about um, you know not just the audit process but also a business and generally about new technologies and and yeah I guess it's just a whole new dynamic of of um, of, of dealing with the younger generation of people that have a different perspective and are learning very quickly and can be trained very quickly, probably a lot quicker to um, to what um, to what I could be trained back in the day when I was at university because they, they can just gather this knowledge so much quicker. So, I mean, to give you an example of that is, is um, a current intern at the moment who is very proactive and she knows um, a, a lot of... Um, has a lot of breadth in terms of her knowledge around uh, generally about the environmental um, industry, uh, energy transition, and um, and you know topical issues. So it's it's certainly um, it's it's certainly been some some great exposure for us as a business um, to get that um, two way learning, um, and as I said as well, also having the ability to to um, to leverage both those those skills now with the ability to. Look at how we as a business can 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 help facilitate um, that that person into a into a full time role. Yeah, the uh, the term that I always like is is beginner's mind. You know, I, I I've I've heard this term before. I believe it's uh, it's kind of a uh, a Toyota production system kaizen lean idea that you know you want to look at a process, say on an assembly line or any kind of production process. And you want to forget everything you know. You want to look at it just with as if you had never seen it before in your life. And it's so much easier to point out all the the strange things that we do. And those of us that have more experience maybe say, "Well, we've always done it that way." But well, okay, but maybe maybe you shouldn't always do it that way. Maybe you you want to look at it with less experience and less foreknowledge, and and ask those questions. And that's very valuable experience, a very valuable undertaking, I think. Yeah, and it's it's and it's it is good to get that fresh perspective, and yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying. Um, you know, being open minded about it, um, taking on board um, feedback, and and I think giving, um, I guess, empowering some some younger generation to to see some of the excitement that um, an auditor potentially can get to see, because um, um, you know you do get to travel, you do get to see some exciting businesses. Um, especially in ecotourism, um, you know, you get to jump on dive boats, you get to um, potentially go on nature walks. Um, I mean, who wouldn't who wouldn't want to do that? So, in my mind, um, it was it was potentially quite an easy sell. Um, you know, you're you're effectively trying to sell um, the ability to go out on and do fun stuff. So, um, so yeah, I mean, and and it's also given me now the ability to to also be a bit open minded with getting younger people into the business. <clears throat> You, of course, mentioned that this was kind of uh, an ecotourism project for you as, as it began. Um, but other people may be looking at this and saying, well, you know, I could use this for, for ISO 9001, uh, you know, quality management system auditing or any form of auditing or assessment. So what would be your recommendation as to you know what someone out there watching this is, who might be interested in doing this in their local area? Uh, what would be some first steps that they could they could take to to engage in that? Well, I, I think definitely, um, you know, talking and engaging with, with the university courses where you feel there'd be a good fit. But um, with, um, yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, looking at some of the things I've covered in the presentation, but ecotourism was quite lucky to come our way. Um, and we saw that as an avenue. Um, ISO 9001 is probably a little bit different. Uh, it's something that you know I, I would like to look at a little bit more. I certainly think that the first step is getting 
um, that exposure and maybe ecotourism is the pathway to ISO 9001 and more. So the way I look at it is, you know, you can, which way do you come in? And at the moment they're coming in through um, ecotourism, but um, the next step may be 9001. So you've got, um, you, you build the skills um, that you need through ecotourism in order to get the, the sign off for 9001, which typically is a little bit stricter because there's different codes and there's different industry classifications, things like that. Um, I'm not saying ecotourism is 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 a little bit more lenient, but what I'm trying to say is that the 9001 model is is um, there's a little bit more rigor around the ability to get auditors signed off. Um, but I think if you can build these processes and use the ecotourism model, potentially we can we can we can get there. Well, Craig D'Souza, that was a really fun, interesting uh, presentation. I really thank you for, for doing that and joining us here at, at this year's Expo. Really enjoyed having you as part of our, of our line of speakers with that topic. And uh, an excellent job. So thanks again for that. No worries. Yeah, um, yeah thanks for the opportunity. And hopefully the audience got, got something out of this. Appreciate it. I'm sure they did. And for all of you out there who are watching, thank you for being here too. Uh, you can uh, claim CPD for watching this session. So just go online right below there and you can follow the links out to get your CPD. And be sure to check out all the other uh, presentations and sessions we have here at this year's Expo, uh, the Excellence in Hauling Expo 2024. You can find them all there on our homepage. So thanks again to all of you for joining us again. Craig, great job. Thank you. And we'll see you again at the next session here at Exemplar Global's Excellence in Auditing Expo 2024.